Hello everyone, welcome to the session. This is Damien from Edureka and in this video I'll be discussing the approval process in Salesforce. But before we get started, if you like our video, please do not forget to subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss out on any updates. Also, if you guys are interested in our certification training, do check out the link shared in the description below. So without delaying, let's get on with today's agenda. So the first thing you gonna understand is what is approval process. Followed by that, we will see the approval process and how to create your approval process and finally we will be doing a hands-on demo that is creating your approval process from scratch so let's get started with the first topic of today's discussion that is what is approval process so let me explain the approval process in a very simple way by taking an example assuming this is neha as you can see here on the left hand side in the diagram and she has applied for a leaf now it can either be a casual or a sick leaf this application will go to the leave authorization. That is when she apply the leave request, it'll go to the leave authorization. Maybe the head or a manager, whether he will approve the request or reject the request. And depending on the approval, your balance is left with how much amount of leave is still available with you in whatever management or platform the organization is using. So this is basically a general idea of leave management in the organization. So let us see the proper definition of what is approval process. So approval process in Salesforce is an automated process that automates how Salesforce records and approve in your ORG or not. Approval process in Salesforce is a combination of steps for a record to be approved or rejected either by a user, queue or public groups. Now there's a list of steps for approval process in Salesforce. Firstly, you need to get your approval process set up then select object for approval process to be written then you can create new approval process from there on you can select standard setup wizard from your drop down and then enter the process name unique name and description for your process and lastly specify the entry criteria so in short that was a few steps required for approval process in salesforce now let's go ahead and check the approval process example a bit more in detail so the first point we have here is a process definition details that is your approval process header levels details like names, emails, templates, etc. And the second point here, we have your initial submission action. It will be executed when the user clicks on submit for approval on the object record. Finally, we have the approval steps. It is the details of steps criteria and the approvers. Now, when we talk about the final approval actions, now they will be executed after all the approval process steps have been approved. Now, when it comes to the final rejection action, it will be executed if one of the approval process steps have been rejected. And the last section we have is recall action. Now, they will be executed if one of the approval process steps have been recalled. So, these are a few of the list of sections to be configured in Salesforce approval process. Now, let's go ahead and check how to create that process in a bit more in details. The first step here is you have to log into Salesforce. However, you can ignore this step if you have already logged in. Now, the second step is to navigate to setup and search for approval process in quick, find or navigate to create, then a workflow and approvals, then approval process. And the third step is from there, you have to go to manage approval process and select on opportunity as you can see on the slide below. Now, the next step is you have to click create new approval process. Now, you can click on the use jumpstart wizard. The jumpstart wizard helps you create a simple approval process by making some decision for you. Now the fifth point is you can configure the approval process as you can see in the diagram below. As you can see here, you have an approve opportunity amount. Then you have the fields where you have to apply the opportunity amount and equals to greater than and the amount of value and select the approver. Now in the sixth step is you have to save the approval process. And then on the next step, you have to click view approval process details page now after that under the final approval action click add new then field updates and configure it with these values and then hit on save under final rejection action click add new then go to field update and configure it with the value then the last step is simply to click on save after that your approval process has been successfully configured so in paper that is how you create your approval process so let's go ahead and do this process in a hands-on demo. So to create approval processes in Salesforce, we need to have an object which should create a leave process, right? 
So I'm going to show you guys how to make an approval process in Salesforce. We have a custom object I created called delivery commitment and I'm going to put an approval process on it that once fully approved is going to move the proposed promise delivery date to the approved promise delivery date. Along the way, it is going to give the approval status pick list updated to reflect whatever the approval process is in. One nice thing about this process is, is that it can update fields which are not editable to the users so that you can have integrity around your processes and can pass an audit. So let us go ahead and get started here by clicking on the setup menu. In the quick find box, you'll type approval and click on approval processes and make sure that the object you're putting the approval process on is in this drop down right here. So in my case, delivery commitment. So hit on create a new approval process and use the standard setup wizard. Now give it a name, say delivery commitment, representative of what it is. And here you can put in a filter so that you can stop bad data from your approvers. For example, I only want the proposed promise delivery date in the future. So I'll just click on next. Here you can select an automated routing based on the submitters field on their profile. We're not going to do that today. We are going to do one user for the entire or record and its ability. Now we're going to let the approver edit the record that they can save on the back and forth and don't have to reject it and have somebody resubmit it. Now for the approval assignment email template, now this is the email template that will go to all the approvers within the approval process. Now it should be pretty generic one like your approval is being requested on this delivery commitment. Here is the link to it and then you can simply click on next. If we click on that link to go to the approval, you wouldn't want to show them a certain number of fields that may be not overwhelming them but just the relevant ones. Next thing you need to do is click on opportunities then click on add and I like to display the approval history and keep the recommended security then hit on next. Here you can find who can and cannot submit for approval. Now you can keep it pretty broad and use public groups and rules or you can be very specific and say who can do it or maybe the record creator or owner or something like that. Now I'm going to add in the page layout the button to submit for approval immediately and allow my submitters to recall the request if they want and then hit on save. Now I'm going to create the steps that go in this approval process. In my case, I'm going to have one step and that's going to be one delivery commitment person. Notice step number one, you can have multiple steps. Now, if you do, it's going to do in sequence. So after the first person approved, it goes to the second steps and so on. So the next thing you need to do is click on next. And you can have some criteria here that will automatically approve or reject that steps. But we only have one person in this whole process. So we're going to do any of this automated stuff. So I'll simply choose to approve and click on next. Now we could let the submitters choose an approver manually, but I'm going to automatically assign it to our delivery commitment person, like say Sir Patrick. And I want to put out that one nice thing about Salesforce is the flexibility you give within these steps. Now you can have multiple people and make it so that they all have to approve it before it goes to the next step, or just the first person gets to get to approve it and they can use the delegates. So you can simply click on save. Now here we're going to take a step back with a quick and go to the actual approval process screen. So you can see all the sections. Now there are five menu sections, the initial submission, the final approval, the final rejection and the recall which have all been discussed earlier in the presentation and the actual steps and on these you can put action that shall happen. Now I have already made some field updates that I'm going to put on each of these to keep my drop down in sync. So click on field update and hit save. So in each of these main ones here, I'm going to add a field update that's going to make the drop down reflect what step it is in. From here, I'm going to add one more on the final approval action. Now it is going to be an email alert to the original submitter, letting them know it's been approved and then we're going to add one more field. Now update that is going to be approved delivery commitment. Essentially, it is going to be where we update the approved promise delivery date to equal the promise one. So it is going to be a formula field and we're just going to grab the proposed date and hit save. 
Now we've got one more update on the email alert. This isn't a normal step. I just want to reroute this email to a generic email address for the sake of this video. Now the only thing left is to activate this. Once again, this is a very high level demonstration and there is a lot more you can do with this. Now if I hit the refresh button on the delivery commitment page, I can enter the approval process by submitting for approval over here and type in please and hit submit. Now you can see the status change to submit it automatically and since I am the approver on the related tab, I can see the history and approve and reject, reassign and recall. So I'm going to approve it. And once I did that on the details page, you can see that it's now approved and the date proof. So with this, we have come to the end of this video. So that was all about the approval process in Salesforce. Thank you guys for attending this session. I hope this could give you a clear idea of how an approval process is taking place in Salesforce. If you like this video, please click on the like icon and subscribe to our channel for more such content. See you in our next video. Until then, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!